What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons. Today I'm going to give you guys a brief tutorial about how to use Copic markers. This video is specifically for beginners. So if you are familiar with alcohol based markers and you want to like move up and get Copic markers then this video is for you. I use Copic markers a lot when I'm drawing cartoons and making my cartoon illustrations or whatever and I think they work pretty great. I'm going to break this video into parts. I'm going to first talk about price and then get into talking about how like Copic labels their markers. Copic has a different labeling system than how like regular alcohol markers do. I'll get into more about that uh, when I get to that and then after that I'm gonna get into uh, talking about how to use the markers and how how to go about them and then I'm also share some techniques that I use in using uh, Copic markers so without further ado let's get to the video so first talking about price I'm gonna let you guys know right now Copic markers are hella expensive not to mention other alcohol markers that are a little bit less expensive but Copic's since they're like the best marker on the market, they're gonna be really, really expensive. One Copic marker can range between eight to $10 for one marker, and that's pretty expensive. Imagine getting a 72 set of a marker that costs between eight to $10. In between that would be nine, so let's do the math. We can multiply nine by 72, and that's about $648. So that is pretty expensive. However, Copic markers do come in sets of 6, 12, 24, 36, and 72. I think 72 is like the most you can get in one set of Copic markers. And the least you can get is like 6, I believe. Let's do some research and see what we got. Copic markers. Okay, so this is the official site. Let's go product category markers. Okay, here. There's a six color set and they come in all these uh um colors and sets they also come in threes i didn't realize that and here's a 12 set of basic colors and there's some grays here uh 24 set and then the 36 set and then the 72 set and they come in uh the 72 sets come in five sets they come in like a b c d and e I believe as you go down and get every set, the colors kind of get, the color selection kind of gets desaturated because look at E, look at the colors here you get in set E and compare that to set A. See all that, see all those saturated colors? And then in set E, you get all these like really desaturated and pale colors. So that's where I like, that's why I got A. A lot of people like getting set A 72 set A because of all these saturated colors. Now let's take a look at how much they cost. So let me go to Amazon. Let's see. Copic markers 72 set A. So the 72 set A costs around $318 and add $520 for shipping. So if you do the math, $318. You kind of get four and a half dollars per marker so i believe it's cheaper to get it in a set hey look down here they got a six piece skin tone set and there's a 20 and it costs 27.88 so let's divide that by six and you get it for almost the same price if you buy copic markers in a set you kind of get them for four and a half dollars but if you buy them individually you get them for like eight to ten dollars unless you go to like your local art store and use like a coupon or something then you kind of do get it for four dollars but do keep in mind that if you're shopping on amazon different sellers will sell them for different prices so even if you do do the math then you would get them for a larger price and you would pay a different price for each marker in that set so just keep that in mind let's talk about how copic labels their markers other alcohol marker brands just throw numbers and letters onto their markers and just add a name to it and call it yay this is our whatever whatever but copic has a really like precise way to label their markers so what you see here is uh, not a random number and letter just smashed together. This is actually a code telling you what the color might be on your uh, Copic marker. The letters you see here, they are YR. So it stands for yellow and red. Yellow and red make orange. So this color that we're looking at right now will be an orange color. And then next to it is a number and that number is two. This number tells the saturation of that color. So the higher that number is, the lower the saturation. The lower that number is, the higher the saturation. 
In this case, this number is two. So this color would be a very saturated color. However, if it were zero, it'd be like very, very saturated. Even if this color were pale, keep in mind that it has a good amount of saturation to it. This next number right here, it's one. This number tells the value of that color. So the lower that number is, the lighter the value. The higher that number is, the darker the value. In this case, this is a one. So this color that we're looking at here, this will be a very light color. So we have a YR, so that's orange. So we'll have a very saturated orange that will have a very light value. A light orange will be like a skin tone color. So I'm assuming that this color that we're looking at here will be a skin tone. So let's put it in and, and yeah, we read the code right and that's what we got. Let's take a look at another one. So we have RV and V stands for violet. We already know that R stands for red. So this color that we're looking at here will be a red violet. So the six, that's the saturation. It won't have a high saturation and it won't have a too low saturation. It'll just be like right in the middle. And this next number here is nine. And like I said earlier, it's gonna be kind of like a value scale with one being a light value and nine being a darker value. So since this number is a nine, it's gonna have a really dark value. So let's take a look at the color. And yeah, so this color is really dark. That's why there's white letters. And it is a red violet color. And also this color isn't too saturated and it's not too desaturated. It's like right in the middle. So that's how you read your Copic markers. It's not too hard, it's pretty straightforward. You just gotta like be able to memorize that sometimes. Just like the first one is the saturation and the next is the value scale. Just like it's basic color theory. Okay, now let's talk about what kinds of Copic markers there are. So there is the Copic Original. So they have the uh, chisel tip and they have their uh, fine bullet tip and their uh, square shapes. There's the Copic Sketch, which a lot of artists, including myself, use. These have a brush tip and a medium chisel tip and they're oval shaped. So if you have an inclined desk, you don't have to worry about the, it uh, sliding off your desk or rolling away. It also has this line on the end of your marker, so it kind of indicates where the brush is. So you won't really have to look at this little icon here. And it also has the uh, name on the cap. Next is the Copic Chow. These are a little bit cheaper than Copic Sketch Markers because they're a little bit more rounded and they have less ink inside than Copic Sketch Markers do. They do have this little line on the end of the cap that tells you where the brush is. and. They have a brush tip as well, and they also have a medium chisel tip too. Also, unlike Copic sketch markers, they don't have the color name and code on the end of the cap, so you have to see it right here in the middle, and the name is right here too. There's also Copic wide markers, which I don't have, but they do have a very wide chisel tip, and I think there's only 24 colors available, but I personally won't need them in my illustration, so that's why I don't have any. Those are uh, the types of Copic markers. There's uh, Copic Original, Copic Sketch, Copic Chows, and then the Copic Wides. Next, I'm gonna talk to you guys how I blend Copic markers. So right here, I have some Copic markers. I have B32, B34, B37, and B39. Earlier, I mentioned that Copic has a very precise labeling system, and all these colors that I have here are the B30s, as in blue, and then the 30s. The 30 on these markers indicates that they will have the same saturation, but the last numbers on here indicate the value. That's why as these numbers go bigger, the value increases and gets darker. So that's why they're a good blending group. So let's blend. I wanna lay down my base color, which is the one color that has the lightest value out of all these colors, which is a B32. So what I wanna do is I wanna lay down a flat color or at least a flat layer of marker, just so I can get that area nice and wet. That way it'd be easier to blend all the other markers. Okay, now I wanna take my next marker and kinda of go over all the areas that I want shading. But I wanna go like big, and then I wanna go like in another area right here. Later on, I'll be blending these areas because it's just, this is only like the second tone. And then I could go darker with these other markers, but this, is, this will just be the mid-tone because it doesn't have a very dark value. And then I can go back with this uh, base tone and blend that in. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add my shades with uh, B37, that's one of the darkest markers that I have. 
And then I can go back with this color that I just put down, which is B34, and blend that into everything else. And then I can go back with my base tone to help blend that uh, that tone that we just put down, help blend that in. And then it's possible you can go darker with your very dark blue. That's an option, but you really don't have to. You can go darker in these really dark areas like right here. And in some cases, you don't really have to apply a lot of blending. Going from here and then going back out there, you don't really have to apply much of that. You can just go in with like your uh, first dark tone and help blend that in. And then you'll be done. And then any final touch-ups you want to add, you can also use your uh, base tone. But in some cases, if it looks the way it does here on camera, it just needs to dry. But hey, this is my preference for blending. I just go with my base tone and just like keep going in and out with my uh, with my markers. In case you haven't noticed, I work light to dark. I first then add my base color, so that way it'd be easier for me to blend my dark tones. Because by doing that, I actually have a wet layer to work on top of instead of using just the dry surface of the paper. So that's why it's easier to work light to dark instead of the other way around. So if you're using Copic markers, you might come across a color that looks like this. This is the number zero colorless blender. This is a marker you'll probably see and it won't have any color inside, but there is going to be ink inside. So it is pretty useful in illustrations because it acts like an eraser for your markers. That's why it's a number zero. And I have this marker as a Copic Chow marker because when I bought it originally, I didn't think I'd be using it for illustrations. And the colorless blender is used for a lot of, uh, illustration techniques which I don't use it for. I just use it as an eraser for your uh, markers and that's basically it. So I'll just go over that with you guys. So I zoomed in on the pants that we just colored and, and hopefully you can see this but I went outside the lines here a little bit. So that's what we're going to use the colorless blender for. So like other Copic Child markers it has a brush and then a medium sized chisel tip. So we can use either or to help get this uh, color out of this like white space. So let's use a brush tip for that. And this ink is also dry, so it may take a little bit more ink to actually like dilute this color here. So I'm just gonna keep going in and in because by doing that, you're gonna wet that ink up. And like I said, you're diluting it, so you're turning it back to white, like this area here. So we're making that ink go back to white. The colorless blender ink looks like a light gray, but that's just because the ink here is wet and it does need time to dry since markers are a wet media. So we're just gonna wet that ink back up and try to dilute it as much as we can just by going over layer and layer and it's gonna be a little bit tough to do it with like a dark color but in this case um, I did it with a couple light colors so it wasn't too hard so yeah the colorless blender isn't just an eraser for your markers it can also dilute colors and make them lighter so if you do have a limited color selection but you happen to have a colorless blender you can also use it to make marker ink a little bit lighter like in this case I would use it here but I'm not going to because I don't want to get any lighter than this so that's the best I can do with uh, trying to erase this entire uh, layer of marker. Also, here's the cool part. If you're using your colorless blender as an eraser, it doesn't taint the nib. So let me show you here. So I just used a colorless blender on like this big layer of brown. The nib is completely clean. So that's what's, that's what's really good about this colorless blender. It doesn't really absorb that marker ink. You can go on with your colorless blender and, and you don't have to worry about the marker ink that you previously used this colorless uh, blender on. You can just go on with it. Yeah, because it doesn't absorb any ink. All you got to do is, uh, you, don't, you don't really have to do anything. Just, you know, just keep going with it. It doesn't contaminate the color of the nib either. It's just plain white. So you don't have to do anything with your colorless blender if you're using it for like erasing your marker ink or diluting the color. So that's pretty cool. Here's something else about Copic markers that are really cool. It's the fact that they are refillable. These aren't Copic markers. These are Copic Various Ink. They're ink refills for your Copic markers. So if your marker runs out of ink or anything, all you gotta do is refill them with this kind of ink. So I have E13, E21, and BO2. These are colors I do use a lot, so I have refill for them. But since it is 2020 and Copic came out with a different like design for the refill inks, they don't look like these anymore. Let me show you how I refill my Copic markers. So I'm gonna look for the corresponding color which is E21 and here it is. This marker I use a lot for skin tone since I draw characters a lot and this marker tends to uh, look dry all the time so let's see. 
So it doesn't look dry now because I previously refilled it in like the past week, I guess. So let me show you how to refill them. If you do have uh, various ink bottles that look like this, all you gotta do is screw off the cap. And then it has a little nozzle up here. You can go drip by drip onto the marker and try to refill it. My only complaint is I don't know when uh, I'll be done refilling it, but until the nib looks nice and juicy in my perspective, then that's when I think I'll be done with it, refilling it. And then sometimes the chiseled nib does like seem to dry fast. I mean, I think it all depends on how you store your markers, but I store mine vertically. So it may seem dry on one side than the other. And I like to go drip by drip on the chisel nib too. And then you're done refilling your marker. So let me show you how to refill another marker. I have E13. And at times I just like to squeeze the bottle so the ink can like kind of flow in. But I don't always do that because sometimes I'm working on top of my final art. Like if this piece of paper weren't here and I was just working on top of here, I wouldn't feel too confident in doing that because I was afraid it's going to like drip on here and kind of like expand. So that's why I don't like doing it on top of final artwork. Because whenever I'm doing this, I like to have a piece of paper underneath me in case like little droplets of the ink bottle spread and get on the uh, and get on the page, which is something I don't like. See like right here. I don't know if you can see that. And that's how you refill your Copic markers. Okay, so now let's talk paper. What paper do I use for Copic markers? Well, for this piece, I'm using thick cardstock, which in my opinion doesn't take wet media well because earlier. It took not too long to dry, but it, it still takes time to dry. It's not really heavy enough to actually make markers dry quick enough for me to keep working on it. So that's why I like to use Canson Bristol paper. I honestly can't tell the difference between vellum and smooth, but I guess the smoother the paper, the easier it is to blend. Here's some artwork I created with uh, Copic markers. I was able to blend and also add some colored pencil to it. I want art paper that I can both blend with Copic markers well and also apply some colored pencil if I need to because if the blending isn't that well for Copic markers on this paper, then I like to use colored pencil to help refine that. There is other paper out there that I don't use. It's called Expressive Blending Card. It's like really smooth marker paper and it's also thick cardstock, but it's so smooth it doesn't take colored pencil well. So that's why I don't have any and that's why I don't use it. Here's some more artwork that I came up with for an upcoming video. I applied some, I actually used the hoo-hoo markers for the uh, for the shirt. I actually threw in some Copic markers to help blend that. And I did Copic markers for the entire part of the face. And then right here, the blending doesn't look too well. I hope you can see that. Hold on, let me zoom in. So the blending looks a little bit muddy. So that's why I can use colored pencil on top of that. Because it is Bristol board, I can apply colored pencil no problem. It won't be too hard for me to fix that blending. So this is the paper that I like to use. A lot of artists' preference will be different. So a lot of artists will not use Bristol board, but will use like thick cardstock with the same paperweight. But I personally like using uh, Bristol board. So as we're getting towards the end of the video, I just want to share with you a little bit more of my preferences towards using Copic markers. I won't share with you guys too many techniques and I'll explain why in a minute, but I'm gonna take a guess and say you guys are wondering what Copic markers I use the most. Well, it kind of does depend on what project I'm working on, but since I am a character designer, I do use skin tones a lot, so that's one thing, but there are a couple of browns that I don't use for skin tones. So let me show you guys a close up of my Copic collection so I can show you what colors that I use a lot of. So this is my entire set of Copic markers. I do have a Ahuhu marker in there and a Master's Touch marker in here. So just in case. So I have the 72 Sketch Markers set A and I also have the Copic Chows set D. All these colors don't come in set D. I did have some individuals that I just put in this box here. Same thing with this entire box of uh, Copic markers. All of these didn't come in the 72 set. So I just stuck some in here and I just sorted them by color. So in this special case, it's a meat in case. I got it off Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description so you can go check that out. But I don't think there are any more available, um, sadly. This is what they have. They have 120 slots for each marker. There are 10 little boxes with 12 slots in them. And I have 11 group of colors here. The browns and the skins I kind of group together because browns and skins kind of go together. Browns are a shade of orange and 
skin tones are a light tint of orange and I didn't want to put them with the orange because it, just so it can separate it out the oranges are actually over here with the reds I don't have that many oranges or reds the rest of the reds I had are in the chow set so they're like and as you can see I don't have a lot of very pale and light colors because I don't really like using pale colors in my illustrations I do have one blue that's like really pale and I'll probably use that for like snow and then the rest of the pale colors that I really do have are right here in the skin tone set. So I use those for blending. And then I do have light grays too. I only have the warm gray, one, two, three, five, seven, nine, and same thing with the cool grays. And I have the two black. I'm not too big on using greens. So that's why I don't have a lot of greens here, but I'm gonna just let you guys know right now, you will rarely see me grab green for my COVID collection. I do have a fair amount of greens to choose from but I don't use greens a lot to begin with the rest of these colors I do use a lot of and I'm pretty thankful that Copic has a very wide selection of colors and has a really precise labeling system and it makes it easy for artists everywhere to use them the reason I'm not going to share with you guys any more tips and tricks in this video is because I have a whole playlist full of self-taught Copic tutorials and I throw in some tips and techniques which you can try link will be in the card right here if you want to go and check that out but hey, that's going to wrap it up for today's video. Before I end the video, I just want to ask y'all to do me a quick favor. Give this video a like and a comment if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you haven't. And also tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you guys in my next video. I